You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. I got cut with my stutter fingers going. (laughs) Oh my lord, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. And yeah, there was a wee bit of a gap in there because, well, I was responding and then all of a sudden it was gone. It's like, oh my goodness. There it was, gone, and I had to go, oh crap. <laughs> of course, I said other things under my breath, but I'm trying to kind of sort of clean up my act and, and say things that sound remotely close to and yet are not. <laughs> it's the intent behind the words. That's what's key, peeps. You got to remember that. The intent behind the words is what is really important here. Okay, um, yeah, it's a Freaker Friday. <laughs> Hi, Beetle Cherry Pie. Yum. Uh, don't get me started on pie. Good God, I still have, I think I still have some pecan pie in my fridge. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised I haven't gotten to it yet. What is this? Um, okay, Women's Guide to Wait. Oh, okay. I gotta share this one over here on on the in the RLM chat just because that's yeah that's kind of funny I don't care who you are that's kind of funny okay um in any case I best be for saying hey there hi there ho there to everybody although it probably wouldn't hurt if I said yeah we are also going out on the RLM Spreaker channel and uh, the RLM uh, let's see RLM Radio dot XYZ and RLM Tune In Radio Station and RLM Internet Radio Station and we're RLM and numma 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 all over the place. Yes, we are. But um, yeah. <sighs> I'm having a day. Actually, it hasn't been a bad day. I got an awful lot of bedding done and that kind of stuff and some videos watched. And and I intended to knit all day today. I intended to get some knitting done and I just kept getting distracted. Imagine that. Me having squirrel moments. Squirrel. Like right now. So, over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. I have, I officially have 510 stalkers, I mean followers, over here on Twitter. Booyah! Bonus round. <laughs> um, oh, funny. Okay, I got to read this over here on Twitter. Uh, Dr. Pat Peters, Ph.D., The IRS has returned my tax return to me this year after I apparently answered one of the questions incorrectly, at least according to them. In response to the question, do you have anyone dependent on you, I wrote 9.5 million illegal immigrants, 1.1 million crackheads, 3.4 million unemployed scroungers, 80,000 criminals in over 85 prisons, plus 650 idiots in Washington. The IRS stated that the answer I gave was unacceptable. So, I then wrote back, who did I leave out? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's just too funny. I got to copy that one, put it over here in the chat too, because yeah. Uh, Danger, danger, wind. Yeah, all kind of wind warnings going on. And you know what? All day today, I have had borderline to actual Stephen King creeper fog going on out here in the boonies. So, yeah, it's been weird weather today. Very weird. Because yesterday was actually pretty decent. And today is like not. What's the deal? What's the deal, pickle? Hi, rascal. Are you going to help me tonight? No claws, please. Okay. Moving along. Hey there to BB9, too. Hey, Blackbird. Long time no chitty chat. I love you, darling. We need to have a, excuse me, a chit chat sometime. 
in the future. It would be really nice. Uh, let's see. And uh, hello, Unknown Revolution as well. And Decoded Reality and, oh, uh, Ranchero42. Cool. All kind of fun people. And Conspiracy Foiler. Booyah. A Conspiracy Foiler. So, apparently the Conspiracy Foiler also has a foil hat. I'm jealous because theirs is fur-lined. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I made that shit up, but what the hell. Okay, moving along. Hi, Paul. Um... Over here on realliberty.org, I see Rob Works is here, as well as Grimmy and Laid In Again, as well as Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Bob Renner was on for a little bit there, and so was Ant. Hey, Ant, and Cowboy Tech, and the lovely Miri B, and all kinds of other people loitering around. And thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know that, yeah, Grammy's on. It's that wild woman. That wild woman. Oh, my God. Out in the middle of the boonies. Okay, over here on this effing site, freedomsnetwork.com. By the way, come on over to freedomsnetwork.com. It really is a pretty cool place. Uh, so is realliberty.org. Both of them are kind of... F no, I don't even want to come remotely close to saying that they're Facebookish, Because they're not. But they are social media sites that are not control freaks. So, yeah, come on over, check them out pretty cool and thank you once again Grimmy over here for letting everyone know that I am live and in poison right now on real liberty media dot com channel 10 I also see, also see Katie Troxell is over here and Cowboy Tech and Estrella I love Estrella she's so awesome and yes thank you honey for sharing that post about the earthquake up in Alaska I saw that and it was like oh I have a niece that just moved to Alaska crap and I'm not real sure what part of Alaska she moved to she moved with her hubby because he's he's with the Navy I don't know Air, I don't know he's in one of the branches of the military service and yeah because she shared a picture of their first moose in their backyard which was really pretty cool but um oh sweetheart I hope you're okay Maddie you and your little bambinos because you've got such cute little bambinos please be safe sweetheart uh, let's see, where else do I want to go? Mines, over here on Mines. Oh, this is awesome, and I just got invited to join Animated Series Fandom, which I have no idea what that is, but hey, I went and joined just to see what the heck's going on, and then I also saw that there is a new place, uh, soapbox.net, for, um, uh, click the join us button for early platform access it's welcome to a new era in video sharing and I did share a link over there in the RLM chat for those of you that might be interested it is um, kind of sort of looks like it could be interesting this is cool you know see that's the good thing that's the flip side of all of these control freaks out there because now everybody's going hey bite me I don't have to put up with your crap, and they're creating their own. And they're also getting to find out just how much fun it is to not only create, but maintain and be a moderator, or whatever you wish to call it, of your own. Because, yes, people have a tendency to go, but you owe it to me. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't owe you nothing. Nothing. I owe it to me. And if I don't want to put up with your crap, I'm not going to, which usually means that I'm just going to ignore you. That's the way I roll. I don't like banning people because I think people, you know, people need to be able to say what they want to say. And then, once they've said it, deal with the repercussions of what they said. Why ban someone? Why censor them? Why not let whatever it is their you know their their emotions or their opinions let them fly and be free, and then they can deal with the repercussions of that freedom. That's called the responsibility side of freedom. Lots of people don't like that side, but tough patooties. Oh well, moving along. Uh, what is this? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So I've been, oh, have I been to Fakie Book? I have not been to Fakie Book yet. And my uh, cousin Marlene says that changing the toilet paper will not result in brain damage. 
or Dane Bramage, however you want to look at that. No, it won't. So, if you are rude and do not change the TP when you're done, seriously, you want to get drop kicked. <laughs> That's like a massive party foul in my books. Just saying. So, uh, moving along. So, I've been to Twitter. I've been to Fakie Book. I've been to RealLiberty.org and Minds and Freedoms Network. So, I guess that means it's time for me to go over to that place where you need to be if you want to give me static. Come on over to RealLibertyMedia.com. Join the chat. And, uh, oh, I saw that, Grim. I did see that you were... Um, yeah, she, well, there's not cold, I thought all of Alaska was cold parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what you're saying, Grim? Probably. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you're listening in on Spreaker, my internet isn't good enough for me to be able to keep that up as well as what I've already got to have up. So, you know, if you want to chit chat with me, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname, join the chat, give me some static. I'll give it back. Just don't be surprised if the other chatters decide to monkey pile on you because, you know, sometimes that happens. And then sometimes everybody goes, oh, we're just going to scob your knob, cybernetically speaking, and say, it's okay. It's all in fun. What can they do? Seriously, what can they do? It's all just keyboard strokes. Stroke, stroke, stroke. In any case, so right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Hey, Barman, how you doing? Round of drinks for everybody. I'm having coffee right now because it's cold out here. I also see Cowboy Tech, who is just pretty freaking awesome. And don't ever get your hearing checked, hun. He always hears sweet voices when I come on and... I love your hearing, hun. <laughs> I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know, as well as the lovely Moose Goyle. Hey, Moosey, how's things going in your world? Is it like totally burzy up there right now? It's not necessarily warm here either. Um, and is it going to be Freaker's Ball tonight or is it going to be Balls to the Wall? Inquiring minds would like to know, or at least I would. The lovely Kate is also in the chat. I'll bet Kate down in Florida is a lot warmer than I am right now. I also see Asmo is here as well as Chloe and Chalcedony and the lovely Soikles and another Chloe with an extra E because she's extra excited. And looky there, D underscore C is here. Hey, Don, how you doing, hun? I also see free enslaved. Hugs to you, hun. I hope your puppies get to be doing better. I really, really do. Um, Yeah, that itchy stuff for puppies is just, it sucks. It truly does. I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe. And hopefully I'll be able to stick around through the whole dang show. But you never know. They keep projecting thunder boomers out here. But I think it's a little bit, well, no. We've had thunder snow out here. We have weird weather out here, by the way. In any case, moving along. I be Don C is also here, as well as Meister Brower. And looky there, we got a ponder gander here. That's that's hillbilly for peeping Tom. But not all of them are called Tom. So it's a ponder gander because he ganders and he ponders. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, I also see some pox in the chat box. We got a poxified and a poxophone as well as pompa pompa pon sauce. Uh, yay! It's going to be a freaker's ball kind of night. Booyah! Oh, look at you, free and slave. Dang! 74. You know, if you were to turn those numbers around, 14.7 is probably... <laughs> That's a lot closer to what I got right now. Although, I don't know. I don't think it's freezing outside yet, but uh, I looked outside. Yes, I don't think CBD for dogs would be a bad thing, free enslaved. I, th I don't think it will hurt them. Let me put it that way. Because CBD, I mean, you have, I think every living creature has, um, oh, you lost that link? I'll find it for you, hun. In any case, uh... Every, I think every creature has CBD receptors in their brain. So, yeah, I don't think CBD is a bad thing. So long as, so long as you don't overdo, you know, because, well, some people think if 
a little bit's good, then a lot is awesome. That's not always the case. Not always. <clears throat> but, hmm. I think, you know what? I think I may have even stuck that link in my uh, pocket, free enslaved. I'll look and see here in a minute. In any case, moving along. Where am I at? Pompo Ponsauce. The lovely Rain is also in the chat, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. And Rob Works. Did you? Yes, he did. Oh, wow. Barman's passing out joints of LAPD, bud. Puff, puff, pass, dude. Rob, are you playing that game? Or are you going to do the bubbler? I miss my bubbler. Rob. Darn it. Something forming south of Joplin. Yay. Well, they can keep it down there. That's way far away from me. I know. Heartless of me. I also see Romes is in the chat as well as Vinny. Hey, Vinny. How you doing, hun? You creeper. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Woodman is also here. We got a double dosing of all kind of stuff. Um, um, actually, Cowboy, everything in moderation does include love because sometimes the love is the really soft, gentle, squishy kind of love, and sometimes it has to be tough love, and you don't want to overdo either one of those too much. I mean, you can give them love, but there's, there's different kind of love, so, you know. You don't want to do that creeper child love stuff, though. You know, where those those pedophiles sit there and go, Oh, but I'm just sharing love. No, hon, you're being a freaking perv. There is a difference between sex and love, hon. A definite difference. Don't be so damn sicko. Okay, moving along. Moving along. Phantom. Hi, Phantom. How are you doing, sweetheart? I know you're probably not listening in, but I'm going to say hey anyway. Beetle. Beetle had weird fog all day today, too. And it's, it, this is really, I mean, this is like Stephen Kingish kind of fog. It's weird. I was almost afraid to go outside. I did anyway, but I didn't hear no weird clickety noises. Just dogs saying, ball, ball. Okay, they said it in doggish, but, you know. Um, Colfax101 is also logged in, as well as Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. And it is Friday, which is a Pastafarian holy day. Booyah! Bring out the beer volcanoes and the wenches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, you are most welcome, cowboy. Uh, Dakota is here. Wow, yeah, and you're way up there in the Bursey Nort. And how is that working out up there now, hon, with the, the, is the shale oil thing kind of sort of falling apart? Sometimes I hear it's, it's collapsing, and then sometimes I hear it, it's going balls to the wall again. And I know gas prices around here are dropping. It was, let's see, yesterday it was 219 a gallon for regular and that's like holy crap I mean it's really dropping it went down six cents from when I fueled up the day before which yeah go figure um frumpy is also here hey frumpy I'm kind of sort of dressed frumpy today got my sweats on because it's warm <laughs> I also see Gromit is logged in as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. And looky there, JJ's that Scottish feller. Keep your kilt tucked, hon. A little bit chilly this time of year. I also see Kozu is in the chat as well as Sock Puppet. Hey, Sock. How you doing, hon? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the F-Bominator, although he hasn't F-Bominated for a while. Skittles. Hi, Skittle. Um, a good pet, what, who, ha, oh, oh, that's awesome, Kate, how cool, oh, they, yeah, Beetle, we have an awful lot of those little tremors going on down, that's in, uh, southern Kansas, and, uh, yeah, because they have an awful lot of fracking going on. In that part of Kansas and Oklahoma and Panhandle of Texas and yeah wherever they've been doing a boatload of fracking they start having a lot of those little tremors going on 
which yeah and then I get to hear about it from my family because all of a sudden the family Facebook thing just blows up did you feel that no I'm about four hours away from the rest of you guys <laughs> the way I drive the way they drive three but <laughs> I stick to the speed limit because I'm not in that big of a hurry so moving along let's see where else do I want to go oh yeah over here on the red pill check see who all's over here ooh 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 I got a duck booyah over here on the red pill also over here on the red pill I see Apostle and I see Beth Z and Echelon and F Can Canella and uh, Juana Taco and Katie Troxel and QFTW and Soily that's over and above the people because some of them are in both RLM and the red pill so sweet hey there hi there ho there everybody let's see where do I want to go first mm, I don't know where I want to go first uh, I think I'll go to this one first actually is what I think I will do I think I will go to the Gateway Pundit, which I did put an awful lot of Gateway Pundit stuff in my pocket today. Holy smokes, imagine that. But this one is uh, breaking. Governor Scott suspends Broward County election supervisor Brenda Snipes. Oh, she does not look happy. Oh, darn. I feel sad. Um... On election night on November the 6th, Broward County Election Supervisors Brenda Snipe reported 634,000 votes were cast in the midterm election in her county. On Friday morning, Broward County election officials said 717,000 votes were cast in the midterm election in her county. Broward County Democrats mysteriously manufactured 83,000 votes in just two days. Talk about overachievers. Then on Friday, Governor Scott announced that he was suspending Brenda Snipes and he replaced her with Peter Antonacci. Snipes was set to receive 130000 a year in pension and it's not clear how that will be affected at this time. Well, now, um, let's see. Wait a minute here. Okay. Then they have a little... The Miami Herald reported Governor Rick Scott suspended Broward County Election Supervisor Brenda Snipes from office Friday, citing malfeasance and incompetence on the heels of a tumultuous recount during which the governor also accused the embattled supervisor of elections fraud. Scott signed an executive order late Friday afternoon removing Snipes from office, and to back his decision, he listed a litany of well-publicized problems, including the misplacement of thousands of ballots during the recount, a missed state deadline to file results, and the inadvertent mixing of invalid ballots with valid ones. Every eligible voter in Florida deserves their vote to be counted and should be or should have confidence in Florida's election process. This is what Scott said in his statement. So after a series of inexcusable actions, it's clear that there needs to be an immediate change in Broward County and taxpayers should no longer be burdened by paying a salary for a supervisor of elections who has already announced resignation. Now, Scott replaced Snipes with Peter... Antonacci, who is a former lobbyist and one-time general counsel to Scott, and a scenario Broward County Democrats worried about when Snipes submitted a resignation letter on November the 18th. Snipes had planned to step down in January, but she won't get that opportunity now that Scott has suspended her, effectively ending her tenure. Snipes initially got the job when then-Governor Jeb Bush appointed her in 2003 to replace the suspended Miriam Oliphant. She was elected and re-elected after. Well, it sounds like you guys down at Broward County have an issue with uh, selecting people that are not necessarily what one would consider trustworthy. Hmm... Now, I do find this extremely amusing myself. Why? Because I'm kind of a heartless crud like that. I did get this off of Twitter, by the way. Um, 
Yeah. What's that? Dun, dun, dun. I'm checking up the chat. Okay. And you know what? These people that, oh, I'm going to get while the getting's good. I heard, an, I, you know, in a lot of the videos that I was listening to today about people that, you know, within days, if not weeks of Trumples being selected, all of a sudden, all of these people in positions in the government, not just ours, but in other governments across the pond, suddenly started, oh, well, I need to resign. It's for family reasons. I want to be able to see mine. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. <laughs> yeah, there is, I, you know, and I have to admit, a lot of these videos is like, yeah, I got to agree with a few of these things. I did not expect Trumples to to get the nod. I really didn't. I thought Shitlery was going to get it. Yeah. And when Trumples got it, it was like, whoa, she must have really pissed off her handlers because, man, she didn't get what it was her turn. She was owed it. Yeah. Sorry, hun, but no, no. There are things that you deserve, but that was not one of them. I hate to tell you that. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> not really. Actually, it's more of a <laughs> darn it all. Oh, but yeah, you know, you play by dirty rules, you know, or your own created rules, and you have a tendency to to suffer repercussions afterwards. Well, we all do, but you know, you suffer more <laughs> than than we do because it's like, really, what? But but everybody else does it. Not a valid excuse. Sorry. As my mother used to put it, just because little Johnny jumps off the bridge doesn't mean you have to as well. So. Well, that didn't work. Poo. Oh, that's because it's Gateway Pundit. Okay. I'll just post it like this. You just go ahead and you just take that realliberty.org. Just take it. Take it. I'll put it over on Effin's site as well because there I can use the fun little emojis. Hee <laughs> hee. I can see I'm going to have to do most of my posting on the Effin site during the show just because realliberty.org does not like the Gateway Pundit links. So. Um, I think this is funny, though. Darn it all. Man, and if that means she's not going to get her little, um, retirement thing. Aw. Aw. Can we have a collective aw? Uh, I think maybe she'll get her retirement, but it might be an extended stay at the Gray Bar Hilton. Just saying. So, um... Let's see. I'm going to go check out Twitter because I see I got... Hi, Gary L. How are you doing, hun? I also watched something from Suspect Sky earlier. Very fascinating, some of the things that are showing up in the sky. And you know what? <laughs> I don't get to see very much of that stuff. Darn it. They must not come out here to fly over country. It must be entirely too boring unless they want to go mutilate cows. And I don't think that's them mutilating cows. I think that's the military and the black ops doing that stuff to mess with people. My personal opinion. So, <laughs> okay, um, I got to share this one. Thank you, Homestead Honey, for this wonderful, funny little, yeah. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yes, Beetle, I agree. Not only does she need to be locked up, you know, I I wouldn't mind paying for an extended stay at the Gray Bar Hilton for some of these people. You know, it's just like everybody says that, that uh, shrillery needs to be put down. Well, that is, that is an option. But for me, I think it would be much more traumatic for her to uh, be locked up in a Gray Bar Hilton. And not club fed. 
you know, your run-of-the-mill, flaky concrete walls, Gray Bar Hilton. I think that would be a good place for her. I really do. Now, speaking of Gray Bar Hilton and all that other fun stuff, I saw this posted multiple times today, so I finally decided, throw it in the pocket, let's check it out. It is also from the thegatewaypundit.com. 16 FBI agents raid home of Clinton Foundation Uranium One whistleblower. Oopsie! Are the chickens coming home to roost? Are they laying stinky eggs? Yes, I hope they are. I hope they're massive stink bombs. So, the Clinton Foundation pay to play and the Uranium One scandal, um, it appears these are the two reasons why Robert Mueller was chosen to run offense and defense with the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. Which, yes, so long as you keep people focused on, look at the little boydy, you know, and Trumples is the boydy, tweet, 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 Trumples. Looky over here, pay no attention to all that stuff we're shredding in the background. That's not shredding, that's a train going by. You do not hear thousands of shredders going on. You do not hear people smashing hard drives. Pay attention to Trumples, the orange-haired Oompa Loompa King. Pay attention. Oh, let's give uh, Melania some shit because we don't like her Christmas decorations. Pay attention over here. Pay no attention to the diabolical deeds we're doing behind your back and in front of your face, but you're distracted by looking at Melania's tacky Christmas decorations. Ugh. Idiots. In any case, on the morning of November the 19th, 16 FBI agents raided the Maryland home of a DOJ whistleblower who was in possession of Clinton Foundation and Uranium One documents. The whistleblower came across the devastating documents while he was working for an FBI contractor. That's according to the whistleblower's lawyer. Note that the FBI and DOJ at this time were under recently fired AG Jeff Sessions. Now, the Daily Caller exclusively reported that the whistleblower, Dennis Nathan Kane, had given these documents to Inspector General Horowitz and both the House and Senate Intel Committees. Intel Committees? Is that... I didn't know the House and Senate had intelligence. Is that one of those oxymoronic kind of things? Just asking. Over the a dozen FBI agents rifled through Dennis Nathan Kane's home for over six hours, even though he had already given the documents to the proper investigative channels. That's according to his lawyer. Now, the documents reveal that then-FBI Director Robert Mueller failed to investigate criminal misconduct by Rosatom. Rosatom? Is that how you say that? Mm-hmm which is the Russian nuclear firm that purchased 20% of U.S.'s uranium. The Daily Caller reported that FBI agents raided the home of the recognized Department of Justice whistleblower who privately delivered documents pertaining to the Clinton Foundation and Uranium One to a government watchdog. That's according to his lawyer. Now, the Justice Department's Inspector General was informed that the documents show that federal officials failed to investigate potential criminal activity, according to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The Clinton Foundation, or regarding, excuse me, criminal activity regarding former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, and Rosatom, the Russian company that purchased Uranium One. A document. This was a document reviewed by the Daily Caller Foundation, and um, the delivered documents also show that then FBI Director Robert Mueller failed to investigate al allegations of criminal misconduct pertaining to Rosatom and to other Russian government entities attached to Uranium One. Uh, Mueller is now the special counsel investigating whether the Trump campaign colluded with Russia during the 2016 selection. Wow. Hmm. I don't think that would make him very much of an independent 
investigator, but special counsel, I wonder if special is the kind of special that they mean when they're talking about those kids that ride the short bus. He's a special kind of person. I'm not going to call him a window licker because I am proud to state that when I hang out with my daughters, I have a tendency to be a bit of a window licker because it's fun to see the expression on other people's faces. But, special. Yes, Mueller is special. The Bureau raided my client to seize what he legally gave Congress about the Clinton Foundation and Uranium One. The whistleblower's lawyer, Mark or Michael Sokaris, told the DCNF, noting that he considered the FBI's raid to be an outrageous disregard of whistleblower protections, which, honey... Have you not seen what happens to whistleblowers lately? Well, okay, for quite some time. But, yeah, they don't like whistleblowers. A lot of times those whistleblowers have accidents. That's how they put it. Now, apparently, Stephanie A. Gallagher, who is a federal magistrate in the U.S. District Court for Baltimore, first nominated by Dangleberry, approved of the FBI raid of Kane's home. Well, why does that not shock me? But when the agents showed up to Kane's home, he informed them that he was a protected whistleblower under the Intelligence Community Whistleblower Protection and that Horowitz officially recognized his status as a whistleblower. But that was Max Nix. In other words, don't mean doodly squat to them because, well, you know, they're order followers and they did what they were told to do. And order followers, in my opinion, especially when they're doing something that they know is wrong, to me, makes them lower than whale shit. And whale shit's at the bottom of the ocean. Now, Kane did inf- he had, oh, okay. He informed the FBI agents that he had already given the House and Senate Intel Committees the classified documents, but he was so frightened by the FBI agents that he immediately handed over the documents that they requested. Now, the FBI agents then proceeded to go through his house and rummage through everything. Why? Because they have badges. And because they have the threat of violence behind them. And the threat of external authorita. I cannot believe that the Bureau informed the federal magistrate who approved the search warrant that they wanted to search the home of an FBI whistleblower to seize the information that he confident or confidentially disclosed to the IG and Congress. The FBI has yet to talk to Kane's attorney despite the raid. And after the raid, and having received my name and phone number from Mr. Kane as his lawyer, the FBI agent actually called my client directly to discuss his seized electronics. Knowingly bypassing the lawyer of a represented client is serious misconduct. Now, prior to Dangleberry's administration approving the very controversial deal in 2010, giving Russia 20% of America's uranium, the FBI had evidence that Russian nuclear industry officials were involved in bribery, kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering in order to benefit Vladimir Putin. No, say it ain't so. Now, shrillery was Secretary of State at the same time that the State Department and government agencies on the Committee on Foreign Investments unanimously approved the partial sale of Canadian mining company Uranium One to the Russian nuclear company uh, Rosatom, ultimately giving Russia 20% of U.S. uranium. Now, nine shareholders in Uranium One just happened to provide more than $145 million in donations. <laughs> I'm thinking that's extortion money, but they, they want to call it donations. Eh, it's the intent behind the words. Yeah, they gave that to the Clinton Foundation in the run-up to State Department approval. Now, 
This is just more of that just pay to play crimes and the Uranium One scandal is a national security crisis. Well, you know, there's lots of things that they consider national security. But this is one of those where y'all got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. And we know because you're glowing in the dark. So, yeah, you y'all have been naughty, 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 naughty. Ooh, tornadoes in Arkansas. Yikes. Yeah. Um, the, um, the weather service actually was predicting tornadoes for that area, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and southeastern Kansas for today. So that doesn't surprise me none. Okay, let me put this over here on the effing site. Because, um, hi, Bubba. My Bubba's inside. No. Ah! No! He's trying to pull my headphone off of me. It's like, dang it, dog. Don't be doing that. Goofy. He gets so excited. But he can't help himself. Bless his heart. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let me get this posted. Over here on the effing site. I'm hearing noises or, or voices in the background, so I'm thinking farmer has company. <laughs> There's always something. It's never boring around here. Ever, 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 ever. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. It looks like I have one, one meme that's just going absolutely ape shit over here on Fakey Book. And that meme is, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes that reason is, you're stupid and make bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I resemble that on multiple occasions. And then there are quite a few times where I'm not necessarily stupid, but I am making some bad decisions. So, yeah, it does happen from time to time. So, oh. Pretties. Okay, back to my pocket I go. Did I put that over here in the chit chat? Yes, I did. Okay. Now let's see if I actually have something in my pocket that is not <laughs> from the Gateway Pundit. Yes, I do, actually. Oh, and you know what? <clears throat> here it is. Um, okay, if it'll pull up. There we go. Here's that link for you, Free Enslaved. On the six essential oils for um, your puppy. I did put it in my pocket. Mainly because I wanted to keep it for later for for uh, my babies. Should they have issues. Wait a minute. That's not what I wanted. Oh, stop it. Okay. No, I don't want that website to do that. So... Here we go. Let me try this again. Get it posted again. There we go. There you go, free enslaved. Okay. So. Um, in any case, where am I at now? Go back to my pocket. Um, yeah, we'll go to this one. And it's from CNN. I know. Don't boot me. <laughs> okay, it's not from CNN. It's from the intercept.com, but it's talking about CNN. Um, CNN submits to right wing outrage mob and fires Mark Lamont Hill due to his quote unquote offensive defense of Palestinians at the UN. You see, there are there are wackos at the tip of either wing. So Y'all just need to realize that both wings are holding up the body of this monstrosity that we call government and the belief in external authorita. So, 
thir- uh, CNN on Thursday afternoon fired its commentator, Temple University professor Mark Lamont Hill, after right-wing defenders of Israel objected to a speech Professor Hill gave at the UN on Wednesday in defense of Palestinian rights. CNN announced the firing just 24 hours after Hill delivered his speech. Now, Hill's firing from CNN is a major victory for the so, uh, growing so-called online call-out culture, in which people who express controversial political views are not merely critiqued, but demonized online, and then formally and institutionally punished after a mob con- consolidates in outrage, often targeting their employees with demands that they be terminated. Yeah, that's... mm. Hill's firing, conversely, is a major defeat for the right to advocate for Palestinian rights and to freely critique the Israeli government and for the ability of journalism and public discourse in the U.S. generally to accommodate dissent. Now, conservatives claimed to be offended. Oh, everybody is off-ended these days and traumatized and hurt by Hill's political views on Israel and Palestine, which they somehow construed as being anti-Semitic, and demand that CNN fire him as punishment for the expression of those opinions. Wow, whatever happened to free speech? Uh, Methinks they doth hypocritically too much. Yeah. CNN honored the demands of those claiming to be victimized by exposure to Hill's viewpoints by firing him as a political analyst. Which, boo to you, CNN. Shame on you. Now, on Wednesday, Hill appeared at an event at the UN Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, commemorating the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian People. And during his speech, he accused the Israeli government of practicing settler colonialism and apartheid. Ah, wow, calling the cattle black. Oh, shame on him. And he supported the international boycott movement against Israel, modeled on the one that ended South African apartheid in 1980s. I don't think it really ended that. It just made it go underground, but my personal opinion and called for a free Palestine from river to the sea, which, yeah, yeah. Now, the right-wing outrage machine sprung into immediate action. The Washington Examiner's Philip Klein accused Hill of a long history of anti-Semitism, adding the phrase, from the river to the sea has been a rallying cry for Hamas and other terrorist groups seeking the elimination of Israel. Now, as a Palestinian state stretching from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea would mean that Israel would be wiped off the map. Well, you know, considering that this was all kind of something that was cooked up, well, not just by the Rockefellers, but several people in of that ilk that were working together to be able to, um, oh, let's say, manipulate worldview. Yeah. <clears throat> now, some on the pro Israel right who agitated for Hill's firing have previously mocked what they call outrage culture, in which people are fired for controversial comments. Ah, hmm, hypocrites. Hypocrites. Now, the Washington Examiner's executive editor and fanatical Israel defender, Seth Mandel, has long denounced and ridiculed such mobs who are angrily objecting, for instance, when Disney recently fired director James Gunn for provocative Twitter remarks about pedophilia. Hmm. Mandel used similar derisive language, Internet Outrage Machine, to denounce the removal of Business Insider of a column by Daniela uh, Greenbaum that many found to be hurtful and traumatizing because it was, they insisted, transphobic. 
Well, you know what? When you fight against something and then you become worse than what it was you were fighting against, you have really messed up. You've gone too far. That's the trouble with all of these do-gooders. They have a tendency to become the monster or an even bigger monster than what they propose to be fighting against. Stop fighting against it. Stop fighting against something that you don't like. Create Buckminster Fuller. Thank you ever so much for this. That runs through my mind constantly. Create a reality that makes the other one obsolete. Stop fighting against a reality that you don't like because what you're doing is feeding it. You're focusing on it and giving it energy. Stop fighting it. Create another reality that makes that one obsolete. <sighs> this goes on to say, yet the very same Seth Mendel who finds outrage mobs so offensive when they target people who have similar political views to his own, helped to lead his own internet outrage mob to have Hill fired. This stalwart champion of free expression posted a series of tweets directed at CNN claiming that Hill was an anti-Jewish bigot and an advocate for genocide and then posted multiple childish tweets with gifts celebrating Hill's firing. Oh, darling, darling, darling. Mm. Yeah. You know, free speech is the, that whole thing about free speech. It's not there to protect this, just the speech that you agree with. It's there to also protect the speech you vehemently disagree with. Because somebody's going to vehemently disagree with your speech. First they came for. Remember that. One day they will come for you too. Quit being such a Captain Assholio. Apparently there are few people more craven and contemptible than those who pretend to support free expression and oppose the attempts of internet mobs to have those disagree with fired only to instantly change positions when it comes to those who, whose views diverge from their own. Seth Mandel is the poster child for such principle-free duplicitous frauds, but he is far from alone. Our discourse, our newsrooms, and our academic institutions, which I did hear a phrase earlier today, and I absolutely love it, quackademic institutions. I love that phrase, quackademics. <laughs> In any case, our quackademic institutions are now drowning with people who demand that any speech be banned and suppressed that they regard as hurtful offensive, traumatizing, or fostering a feeling of being unsafe. But what they really mean is that they want speech suppressed that they and those who agree with them find hurtful and traumatizing. Go find your safe space, suck your thumb, or find a binky and find your blankie and just be a sad little camper over in the corner, okay? Speech that makes their political enemies feel off-ended uncomfortable or unsafe is heralded as brave and provocative. Blah, da, blah, da, blah, da, blah. And that double standard is unsustainable. It's empty and depraved. It is certain to consume not just one's political enemies, but also one's political allies, as CNN's firing of Mark Lamont Hill just demonstrated. As I've often noted, the most baffling and repressive repellent trait of censorship advocates is that they somehow convince themselves that the censorship standards that they champion will only be used against the ideas that they hate and that the idea is that they will somehow be protected. As Matt um, Tybee has been repeatedly documenting, this is the warped self-delusion that led liberals to demand that Silicon Valley companies censor political speech, only to now be shocked and angry that much of that online censorship is being directed at leftist and even liberal sites. Be careful what you wish for. 
Now, as he reported last year, Liberal demands that Facebook remove content that supposedly incites violence resulted predictably, in the removal of thousands of Palestinian pages at the demands of the Israeli government, while very few Israeli pages suffered similar repression. Censorship advocates reap what they sow, and it usually ends up consuming them and their own allies. It may be karmic justice, but it does massive damage to the ability to have free discourse and the right of dissent and the flow of unpopular views. Obviously, as a private corporation, CNN has the legal right to fire Hill, just as Google had the right to fire James Damore. And Facebook has the legal right to ban Palestinians. Twitter had the legal right to ban various right-wing polemicists. And ABC had the legal right to fire Roseanne Barr. The question is not one of legality, but politics and ethics. What are the consequences from demanding that adults be shielded from offensive ideas, even in places where offense, upset, and so-called trauma are inevitable? Now, the accusations launched against Hill that his comments are anti-Semitic and constitute advocacy of genocide are so disingenuous and blatantly false that one is reluctant to even dignify them with a substantive critique. But the damage done to Hill's reputation by this pro-Israel, pro-censorship internet mob requires that it be done. Hill defended himself quite adeptly in a series of tweets explaining his speech. In sum, this shameful and cowardly action by CNN demonstrates two vital truths about free speech that have been proven over and over, yet are so often ignored. Number one, Israeli citizens have greater liberty to criticize the Israeli government than U.S. citizens have to criticize the Israeli government. In other words, criticisms of Israel that are common and mainstream in Israel are banned and punished in the U.S. And, number two, the greatest threat to free speech in the West and the most frequent and common form of censorship on college campuses is aimed at those who criticize Israel and defend Palestinians, to the point where advocating for the boycott is a criminal offense now. Kiss my what? And the firing of Professor Hill is just the latest data point proving this. It is a requirement in the U.S. discourse about pa- Israel and Palestine. <coughs> Excuse me that an absolute lie be affirmed, namely that it's still possible for a viable two-state solution to be created where Palestine and Israel live side by side as sovereign states. The undeniable reality that is now widely recognized in both Israel and Palestine is that it's forbidden to to be acknowledged in mainstream U.S. precincts. So is that illegal Israeli settlements have grown so rapidly and eaten up so much of Palestinian land in the West Bank that such a solution is now essentially impossible? That's a fact that even the UN acknowledges. And that leaves only two realistic choices. Either A, a single state, from the river to the sea in which Israelis as a minority have full political rights while Palestinians are segregated and treated and repressed as second-class citizens, which is the very definition of apartheid, or B, a single state from river to sea in which both Israelis and Palestinians share full and equal political rights. Professor Hill, like all morally decent people, opposes apartheid. Therefore, he advocates a single state in which both Palestinians and Israelis have equal political rights. What is actually offensive is not Professor Hill's comments, but rather the suggestion that it is anti-Semitic, 
or constitutes advocacy of genocide to support equal political rights for all human beings, including Palestinians. Indeed, Israel's own Prime Minister and Defense Minister Ehud Barak has repeatedly warned that Israelis will be a full-fledged apartheid state if it continues to exercise dominion over Palestinians. There is no doubt that Israel is well down that path, and Professor Hill opposes that path because it's classic apartheid and repression, and it's nothing short of reprehensible to accuse him of being a Jew hater for his advocacy of basic principles of human rights and self-determination. Moreover, Hill's argument that it has long been viewed as acceptable for repressed and occupied groups to resist their occupiers, including through the use of violence, is indisputably true as a historical matter. So does anyone believe that if the Chinese army invaded and occupied U.S. soil tomorrow that it would be immoral for Americans to resist by all means, including violence? <laughs> This underscores a crucial point I've long noted. All forms of Palestinian resistance to Israeli occupation are deemed immoral in U.S. discourse. So if Palestinians attack Israeli soldiers occupying their land, that's called terrorism. If they advocate nonviolent protest uh, moments such as boycotts, that's called anti-Semitism and is even criminalized in many places in the West and punished on U.S. college campuses by those who partake of quackademics. And if they hold peaceful protests on the border in an open-air prison in Gaza and have their own teenagers gunned down by Israeli snipers, that's cheered as Israeli defense. Yeah, how sick is that? The only permissible permission or position in U.S. discourse is the demand that Palestinians meekly submit to Israeli occupation. I'm thinking single finger salute needs to be flying right about now, if not a few other things. And any pro offered justification for Palestinian resistance are not just condemned but punished, as Professor Hill just learned. This is not the first time CNN has fired one of its journalists for expressing views deemed offensive and hurtful by Israel defenders. Recall that in 2010, CNN ended the 20-year career of Octavia Nassar, um, its Atlanta-based senior Middle East news editor, for the crime of expressing condolences and admiration upon the death of one of the Shiite world's most beloved religious figures. Highly controversial due to his aff affiliation with Hezbollah. Now, all that said, it's undeniably true that there are many people, Jews and others, who felt genuinely offended, hurt, unsafe, and even traumatized by Hill's remarks. I know people in my own family and lifelong friends who insist with great credibility and sincerity to experience all of those negative emotions when they hear someone advocating a one-state solution or a boycott of Israel, as Professor Hill did this week. Their offense their hurt, their trauma, are real, I would add, to them, at least in the very loose and sloppy ways that those terms are now commonly used in the age of millennials to indicate negative reactions to political views one dislikes. It's now quite common, even in the places where ideas are meant to flow most freely, such as newsrooms and and quackademic institutions to demand that content be suppressed or punished if its expression traumatizes someone or makes them feel off-ended and unsafe. Those are your feelings, darling. Deal with them. 
Though this self-protective mentality is often at, attributed to liberal millennials, it is in fact widely invoked across ideologies and generations to justify censorship. Recall that in 2014, the University of Illinois rescinded its teaching offer to Palestinian American professor Stephen Salida, or Salida after he posted tweets harshly criticizing pa uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during Israel's horrific civilian slaughtering attack on Gaza. That happened because pro-Israel donors, trustees, and students claimed that they felt traumatized and offended by his political views. So here's how the New York Times explained his punishment. What we cannot and will not tolerate at the University of Illinois, Ms. Wise wrote last month, are personal and disrespectful words or actions that demean and abuse either viewpoints themselves or those who express them. It's about feeling safe on campus, Noah Feingold, who is a member of the pro-Israel student group. He told the forward this, and this is a professor who tweeted that if you support Israel, you're an awful person. Wow, someone who expressed an opinion should not be able to wake. Hmm, just because you differ with their opinion. Oh, someone call the ambulance. This demand used to justify his effective firing as a scholar that even as an adult, one has the right at times to feel safe from the expression of offensive ideas was the same one used by the right-wing movement during the Bush 43 years to try and have pro-Arab professors fired at Columbia University, a movement which newfound free expression activist Barry Weiss, or Weiss not only defended but helped to lead. And that's on the grounds that Jewish students felt unsafe and traumatized by the ideas they expressed. Deal with your feelings, hon. Quit letting them control you. You need to control them. You feel feelings. You are not a feeling. If you are a feeling, that feeling controls you. Hmm. If you're someone who demands that speech be suppressed or punished if it's hurtful or offensive, who decides what's hurtful or offensive? That's what I want to know. Or that adults have the right to be shielded from traumatizing ideas that make them feel unsafe. You should congratulate yourself, regardless of your ideology, for your great victory in having Hill fired from CNN. There really is no doubt that the opinions he expressed, just as was true for Salati and Nasir, were hurtful, traumatic, and offensive to many. That's their problem. They need to deal with it. But that's the nature of having free thought and vibrant debate among adults. I know, adulting is hard. Ideas that are offensive will sometimes be aired. Adults will sometimes feel negative emotions from hearing the viewpoints of others. Traumatizing events and thoughts will sometimes be discussed. Journalism and political expression will sometimes be upsetting. Yeah. Nobody gets to create a standard where ideas that are hurtful and traumatizing to them, are barred, whereas ideas that have the same effect on their political adversaries are permitted and celebrated. You either support a standard in which one has the right to engage in free political expression without punishment, or you recognize that you are one who is laying the groundwork for the never-ending bickering in which various online mobs relentlessly and with increasing success, ensure that anyone expressing views that they find upsetting are fired. Very sad. Y'all are supposed to be adults. Supposed to be, at least chronologically. Try acting the part. I know it's hard. Adulting is hard. But try and do it anyway. Lord. Very sad. Very sad. 
that this kind of nonsense continues. But, you know, in quackademics and in what passes for journalism these days. Yeah, I don't think so. There's a lot of people out there that I don't agree with them, but I don't want to shut them up. There's a lot of people out there that don't agree with me. Do they want to shut me up? Probably. Is it going to work? Well, only if I feel like shutting up. Just saying. So, let's see. Where's, yeah, we'll do that one. And then we'll do that one. Yeah. So, big babies. That's right, Grimmy. Whining wussies. Pretty much says it all right there. Okay. Oh, God. I opened my pocket and there it was. Robert Mueller. He's a, wow. He looks like a very sad fellow. A very angry fellow. Okay. How about we go... You know, I was talking about the election fraud down in Florida. Let's go check this one out, shall we? This is also from the Gateway Pundit. Yeah, I told you I had lots of it in my pocket today from the Gateway Pundit. So, wow, even Paul Ryan questions suspicious California selection results where demon craps flipped seven seats after election day. Yep, Orange County, a traditionally conservative enclave in Southern California, turned all blue after Democrats found tens of thousands of votes posted election or post-election day. Now, just two years ago, in 2016, only two congressional districts in Orange County voted blue. Now, just two years later, every single district voted blue. Is that kind of sort of like uh, the last time Dangleberry got selected? If I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, there was a district in Ohio that the whole district went dangleberry with 117% voter turnout. Now, I could be, but I, I remember there were several, several places throughout the country where the voter turnout was more than the registered voters for that area. And miraculously, they went for Dangleberry. I'm shocked, I tell you. I guess if it works for them, if it worked once, they're going to keep doing it until they get busted for it. Now, this goes on to say, Democrat blue wave or more like Democrat selection fraud. There were 530,427 Democrat votes in Orange County for Congress. And 487,704 for the Democrat governor. Democrats picked up more than 42,000 votes in Congress over the governor's race. Now, the Republican candidate won the governor's race in Orange County, but every single House seat picked up enough votes after Election Day to sweep Orange County. On Thursday, even Speaker Paul Ryan questioned the curious results in California. As The Hill reported, weeks after House Republicans lost their majority, Speaker Paul Ryan, Republican of Wisconsin, on Thursday cast serious doubt about the bizarre election system in California, where it appears that even s- that, excuse me, that it, where it appears that seven GOP-held seats will flip to Democratic control. Now, the California selection system just defies logic to me, Ryan said during a Washington Post event. We were only down 26 seats the night of the selection, and three weeks later, we lost basically every California race. This selection system they have, I can't begin to understand what ballot harvesting is. It was a remarkable comment from the retiring Speaker of the House, who until now had not joined POTUS Trump and other Republicans who have complained about what they believed were selection irregularities in places like Florida and California. 
Now, after this story was published, Ryan campaign spokesman Jerry Adler said in a statement that the speaker did not and does not dispute the results of the selection. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Whatever happens, I'm going to go along with the herd. Mm. Which basically means they're just two sides of the same coin. That's all there is to it. I know, Bubba. You want attention. Sorry, bud. Crazy doggy. So. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, okay. Moving along. Let me put this over here in the effing site real quick. Yeah, it's, you know, that magic math. Now, I did watch a video earlier today uh, about Tesla's fascination with 3, 6, and 9. And I do have to say that for as long as I can remember, I have always counted in threes. You know, or for as long as I can remember doing that. You know, I mean, yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, yeah, everybody does that. But a lot of times when I'm counting things, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, on and on and on and on. I've just... And so that's basically the reason why I even clicked on the video. But it really was a very fascinating um, video about numbers and uh, how how adding and multiplying and different things that are just constants with numbers. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to have to watch this one again and really pay attention this time instead of getting up every once in a while and doing laundry. <laughs> but hey, um, let's see, get this one shared real quick, yeah, there we go, and then back to my pocket I go, <coughs> excuse me, okay, I got to do this one, just because it's too freaking funny, I don't remember who shared it, that I clicked on it and went, <laughs> seriously? Oh, priceless. Priceless. It's from um, Team Bongino. I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, but that's okay. He won't mind. No, I don't want you sending me notifications. Um, although I do like listening to his videos, but no, I don't want notifications. Thank you very little. Did you know that uh, um, tickets to one-of-a-kind Bill and Shrillery Clinton event priced at $6.55, and the arena was still 83% empty. <laughs> Why pay for their lies when you get them for free on a daily basis? That's what I say. And you're already paying for it anyway, one way or t'other. It's just usually f from behind. Yeah, good old Slick, Real, Slick Willie and Shrillery kicked off their one-of-a-kind speaking tour in Kanakistan on Tuesday evening with last-minute ticket, last tickets being sold for as little as $6.55 Canadian or just less than five U.S. dollars. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I need a drink real quick. I've been reading too much. Damn it, I talk too much. Now, the Daily Mail reports that the Clintons sold about 3,300 tickets in a Toronto venue that holds over 19,000 seats for hockey games. And as Breitbart points out, that equates to about 83% empty seats. <laughs> so, there were still plenty of tickets available 30 minutes before showtime, and a secondary market appeared to be dropping. The cheapest ticket available on uh, StubHub was going for six fifty five Canadian or less than five dollars and on the official site there were still seats up front on the floor available for three hundred and twenty five dollars with other floor seats going for eighty three dollars plus a hefty service charge 
Now, officials told the DailyMail.com that organizers were experience, or expecting 3,300 people with about 1,000 buying up close seats on the floor. Really? Well, the tour entitled An Evening with the Clintons. <laughs> wow, that's a scary thought. It will hit 13 cities between now and May of 2019. The paid speaking event is being promoted by Live Nation, which describes the speaking tour as a one-of-a-kind conversation with the two leaders, no, I think two leeches, as they tell their stories from some of the most impactful moments in modern history. Or read that as his story. Now, Live Nation says the tour will feature joint on-stage conversations with the two leeches, sharing stories and inspiring anecdotes that shaped their historic careers in public service here. Yeah. yeah, how to serve man. It's a cookbook. So while also discussing issues of the day and looking towards the future. Now, some demon craps are finding the speaking tour inappropriate, with one former Clinton aide telling CNN, I just think the optics are going uh, to an event where people are paying to see them, and they are financially gaining from this. I'm not sure that is the right way to um, re-ingratiate them back into the public sphere. Oh, there is no way to re-ingratiate those two. No, 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 no. Yeah, they haven't gone away, and I don't want them to go away, but I'm not sure that this is the right venue for an optics standpoint. Wow, really? Two figures, that would come from CNN. Now, Tuesday night's event featured many jabs at POTUS Trump, as well as discussions about Saudi journalist Jamal um, Khashoggi and the midterm selections, the killing of Osama bin Laden, and the Iran deal. Yeah, right. And of course, it wouldn't have been a Clinton speaking event if Hillary didn't have a coughing fit. Oh, shit. And I've been coughing tonight. Damn it. Damn it. Although I've actually been doing a lot of reading and woof. Woof. Woofty. Uh, that's two soulless individuals if I ever saw it. And yes, Grammy, I think the Canucks could have them. They can keep them. That Wouldn't that just be so funny if uh, border agents went, no, sorry, uh, you have been rescinded. You no, you're no longer allowed. We moved the United States. <laughs> okay. So, a one-of-a-kind, wow. You know, there, sometimes there are one-of-a-kind things that it's a really good thing that they're just one-of-a-kind. And that's one of them. Wow, it's getting late. I probably ought to go check out the pig. Okay, this one is just, yeah, this one is just too funny. I gotta, sh I gotta share the laughing guy on this one. Because it's just too funny. <laughs> uh, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And most definitely, this is a Yertle the Turtle moment for people. You know, remember, Yertle got too big for his britches. And then that poor little guy on the bottom that he was sta everyone was standing upon belched. Next thing you know, here comes Yertle. Splat. Face first. In some brown gooey substance. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Over here on the pig. PIGazette.com. Where Hambo and Porcas reign supreme. Or run rampant. Or however you want to put that. Uh, and their pick of the day. Let's check this out. From the Riverside Baptist Church. We're the only people forgiving enough to tolerate your horrifying rendition of Silent Night. <laughs> <laughs> That's apparently on a billboard outside the church. Wow. Um, which is why I don't do that kind of stuff. 
I don't need you to tolerate my hor- horrendous. I, I do that in my own home, thank you very much. Preferably when no one is around, even the animals are outside, so I don't have to traumatize them as well. Okay, over here on the pig, the word of the day is storm watch. Number one, a seasonal dose of news nitwit lunacy that proves that any rational adult already knew. Reporters are so damn stupid that they don't know enough to come in out of the rain. Okay, I agree with that definition. Or number two, it's a peculiar form of insanity endemic in sanctuary cities, City of Angels, News Nitwits. It involves rain slickered numbskulls standing in the rain looking for a bearded relic in a moo moo who is herding animals two by two into an SUV. Wow, they must be getting lots of rain out there in California right now, at least in the Los Angeles area. And finally, number three, a highly contagious insanity which sweeps through newsrooms in plague-like proportions. It compels tragically deranged news nitwits to pull a rain slicker, then race outside to play chicken with a hurricane. Oh, yeah. Those pretty much, yeah, you know, and I got to tell you, I can't pick on them too awful much because I'm one of them, they're people that um, I take my tablet and I go stand outside and I look at the clouds when they say that there's a tornado in the area. Oh yeah, I'm one of them there. Look, there's a tornado over there. Let's go check it out. <laughs> and my youngest daughter is one of those that... They so she hears about tornado warnings and that kind of stuff. Hun, grab the car keys. Let's go find it. <laughs> yeah, we're a special kind of stupid sometimes out here, but still here. In their quotable quotes section, liberals are always proposing perfectly insane, insane ideas. Laws that will make everybody happy. Laws that will make everything right. Make us live forever and all be rich. Conservatives are never that stupid. Having conservatives in Guberman is like having a stern talk with your dad in the den about what your allowance will be. Of course, the Republicans always end up giving in, you know, give you more money than you should have in your pocket, and the keys to the car, and then also a bottle of whiskey. That's from PJ O'Rourke, and yeah. Yeah, they spout a good game, but that's about it. They spout a good game. So, um, in the Tasty Tidbits section from LegalInsurrection.com. Yes, Vinny made it. Activist women claim Trump's election is destroying their marriages. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Honey, if you're still sobbing daily about that, it, it's no wonder. Uh, apparently angry that their spouses don't hate Trump with the same zeal, women are walking away from their husbands. It's That's not Trump's fault, hun. So is there anything Trump can't do? An article recently published in New York Magazine is truly something else. A handful of women who found themselves politically activated after Trump's election win or electoral win now believe that they cannot live their newfound activities li- or ac- activist lives alongside their spouses. Get that spit out, Grams. The trend to normalize and legitimize this kind of attitude and behavior is even more disturbing than the behavior itself. After attending a Witnessing whiteness class. Oh, good God. Oh, good God. 50-something Kristen from Misery, yeah, the show me state, just couldn't, um, couldn't, un- couldn't what? From Missouri. Couldn't her unengaged husband who wasn't interested in, probably couldn't understand. I don't know who is interested in, couldn't understand why he wasn't interested in picking up a picket sign to join the mob. So she left him. Well, I think he's better off, hon. 
I told him I really wanted to work on making the world a better place, and I didn't feel I could do it within the confines of our marriage. Honey, excuses, excuses, excuses. Apparently, I'd found a passion and wanted to spend all of my free time doing it, and that's exactly what has happened. Well, hmm, you should really learn about what passion, wow, it is kind of sad that in this horrible time, I found myself, but I'm also grateful both for what I had with uh, Jeffrey and for where it allowed me to end up. Finally, I'm a feminist I should have always been. Oh, great. You're just so grateful that you're a feminazi. I'm happy for you, darling. Stay on your side of the street, okay? Then there's Sarah, who's a 30-something from the Southwest, who complains that her husband would be way happier if he would just do what she wants him to do. <laughs> All righty. It just breaks my heart whenever he says he's lonely. But again, I'm like, you don't have to be lonely if you want to put up street signs with me. Yeah, if you want to do what I want to do, you won't have to be lonely. But I'm not going to do what you want to do. You have to do what I want to do. That's just the way it works here, according to me. Apparently, it breaks her heart. Aww. And part of it is that he has a perspective that this, this too shall pass. Well, in my opinion, that comes from the privilege he has as a white male Protestant. Oh, good God. Ugh. Oh, somebody got slapped with a stupid stick. Obviously. Wow, honey, mm, you and me, we gonna have to have chat. Not a very long one, but a chat, nonetheless. <laughs> Apparently, I describe my husband as a he, as a feminist, but he doesn't want to be the only dude in the room, which bleeds into why I've never thought. Maybe I should just stop all of this and save my marriage. Well, that's because you, the key phrase there is never thought. That would teach our children something that I don't want to teach them. It almost feels like the 2018 version of the woman who gives up her career to stay home. Oh, good. Oh, honey, you are teaching your children a lesson. Trust me. It's just not necessarily a lesson that you're going to be real proud of years down the road. Or maybe you will be. Hell, who am I to say? Apparently, Samantha and John from New York City are having issues because John doesn't hate Trump near as much as Samantha. Oh, wow. We've been married 25 years and we're both lefties. And he thinks Trump, Trump is as much of a blight on the world as I do. But throughout the hiring of the Steve um, Munchens of the world... The white privileged men, and with every single cabinet member and Jared Kushner and Ivanka, he had much less rage than I did. Eventually, he was like, we can't go to bed talking about them and wake up in the morning with you still spewing about them. Then with Brett Kavanaugh, the first thing he said about him before any of the allegations was that they were once on a panel at some alumni thing and that he seemed like a nice guy, which of course started a fight. And I said, a nice guy based on what? Ooh, wait, hmm, excuse me, uh, personal experience? Hmm, oh, we can't have that because everyone is a nice guy? Hmm? And then, at first, when Dr. Ford came forward, his reaction had the an element of, boys will be boys, and you know, it was 30-something years ago. Even after Debbie Ramirez came forward, he was like, do you still think he could change after college? And I was like, no. At each stage, he had to reassess his feelings, because I made his life horrible. Oh, that's written between the lines, by the way. And at each stage, we have yet another argument. Basically, he didn't do what she told him to do. Now, part of what causes fights is that I don't want to hear his side, and he hates that. <laughs> well, admitting it's part of half of, halfway there, sweetheart, you're getting there. Mostly, I tell him he needs to think about this more clearly before he talks to me about it, and then I walk away. 
Gee, I just can't imagine why there would be conflict in a marriage where one is telling the other their opinion and thoughts aren't the right opinions and thoughts. So if their stories are as they tell them, their reasons for parting ways with their spouses are wholly self-involved, myopic, childish. They might be blaming the aftermath of Trump's selection for their marital disruptions, but I can assure you such attitudes were always present and they just found a convenient excuse on which to pin them. Politics is not life and life does not revolve around politics, or it should not anyway. Marriage and resultant families are the cornerstones on which any society stands or crumbles not the other way around. We used to know this. Oy, oy, oy. You know, those women did their husbands a favor. I'm just saying. <laughs> wow. Um, in the things to ponder section over here on the pig, Lying around, pondering the problems of the world, I realize that at my age, I don't really give a rat's ass anymore. <laughs> so if walking is good for your health, the postman would be immortal. And you know, a whale swims all day, only eats fish, and drinks water, but is still fat. And a rabbit runs and hops and only lives 15 years, while a tortoise doesn't run, and does mostly nothing, yet it lives for 150 years. And they tell us to exercise. Well, I don't think so. And now that I'm older, here's what I've discovered. Number one, I started out with nothing and I still have most of it. Number two, my wild oats are mostly, or are mostly enjoyed with prunes, <laughs> And all brand. <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that one. Number three. Funny, I don't remember being absent-minded. See, they always tell you the memory is the first thing to go, but how do you know? Maybe something else went first and you just don't remember it. Number four. Oh, no, I just did that. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Number four. Funny, I don't remember being absent-minded. <laughs> I think I had this conversation earlier today with my mom. Um, number five, if all is not lost, then where the hell is it? It's in my mom's basement. There is this kind of wormhole portal down there. As soon as she gets rid of crap, there's more stuff that appears. I swear to God. Number six, it was a whole lot easier to get older than it was to get wiser. Oh, yeah. I don't think nearly as many bruises either. Just saying. Number seven, some days you're the top dog and some days you're the hydrant. <laughs> I had that discussion the other day, that epiphany. <clears throat> Number eight, I wish the buck really did stop here. I sure could use a few of them. <laughs> Unless you're talking about deer, then those are male bucks. And I don't know that you want to mess with them. Number nine, Kids in the backseat cause accidents. Yes, they do. And my dad always used to say, don't make me pull this car over. To which we would all get really silent. And finally, number 10. Accidents in the backseat cause kids. <laughs> yeah. It pretty much. On this date in history, the 30th of November. It's the last day of November, by the way. Yay! Tomorrow's December. And all kinds of exciting things are purported to be coming along in this next month, including Santa Claus. Poor Santa Claus. You really do need to feel sorry for him because he only comes once a year and that's down a chimney. But um, boom, boom. By the way, this date in history, the 30th of November in 1954, old Kaboom's target practice pays dividends when he flings an eight-pound meteorite and nails a... Uh, a Silicaga, Alabama woman named Liz Hodges. Gotcha. Ouch. Ouch. Also, this date in history, they only had two of them today. Uh, the 30th of November, 1988, UN General Assembly votes f 151 to 2 
to censure Uncle Sam for denying Arafat a visa. Punishment options include holding breath until they turn blue and issuing a sternly wo uh, worded memo. I don't think we got either one of them, actually. <clears throat> Just saying. There's lots more over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over and say hey to Hambo and Porkus. I'm sure they will say hey back eventually. Eventually. Hey, sock puppet. What are you guys rubbing? I don't want to know. Oh, you guys are just, oh, wow. Wow. I don't want to know about what you're talking about. I just don't. I just don't. Nope. Nope. Y'all are pervy over here in the chit chat. I love you, but you pervs. Okay. Ah, want a taco beat me to the duck. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, what is that? A Twitter status. Oh, yeah, that, that uh, yeah. From Sherry uh, Ruzich. 39 firefighters lost their homes in the California fires, and celebrities are raising money to help illegals at the border. Go figure. Yeah. Mm. Brilliance abounds, let me tell you. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Oh, God. Slick Willie and Shitlery are still there. Um. Oh, okay. I'm going to go to this one just because um, weirdness. Weirdness. Now, I have it from two different sites. I have it from governmentslaves.info, and I also have it from National Geographic. I think, I think, I think I'll just go with the National Geographic one because, well, you know, it was the first one in line. So, um, in lieu of the earthquake today in Alaska, people have been getting hinky about this stuff anyway, but I've, I found it really fascinating. <clears throat> I have no idea what the hell's going on, but obviously Mother Nature is letting us know that she's in control, not us. We may think so. We may think we're pretty damn big in our britches, but guess what? We live on her. We need her to survive. She does not need us to survive. Just saying. Now, from NationalGeographic.com and their Science and Innovation section, strange wave ripples around the world and nobody knows why. The instruments picked up the seismic waves more than 10,000 miles away. But bizarrely, nobody felt them. On the morning of November 11th, hmm, significant? Quinky dink? I think not. Just before 9.30 UT, a mysterious rumble rolled around the world. Now, the seismic waves began roughly 15 miles offshore or off the shores of Mayotte, which is a, a uh, French island sandwiched between Africa and the northern tip of Mad Madagascar. Wow, I get a geography lesson, too. Cool. Um... The waves buzzed across Africa, ringing sensors in Zim uh, Zambia, Kenya, and Ethiopia. They traversed vast oceans, humming across Chile, New Zealand. Okay, honey. New Zealand comes before Chile. Humming across Chile, New Zealand, Canada, and even Hawaii. Ca Hawaii comes before Canada, too, which is nearly 11,000 miles away. <clears throat> Even I know that much in geography. Now, these waves didn't just zip by. They rang for more than 20 minutes. And yet, it seems no human felt them. Only one person noticed the odd signal on the U.S. Geological Survey's real-time seismogram displays, which is an earthquake enthusiast who uses the handle uh, Matrika matriki packs okay and they saw the curious zigzags posted the image of them to twitter 
and that small action kicked off another ripple of sorts as researchers around the world attempted to suss out the source of the waves. Was it a meteor strike? A super or submarine volcano eruption? An ancient sea monster rising from the deep? Oh, well, let's get silly now. Or maybe not. I don't think I've seen anything like it, says um, yeah, Goran Ekstrom, who is a seismologist at Columbia University who specializes in unusual earthquakes. Now, it doesn't mean that in the end, the cause of them is that is that exotic, he notes, yet many features of the wave are remarkably weird. From their surprisingly monotone low frequency ring to their global spread. And researchers are still chasing down the geologic conundrum. So why are low frequency waves so weird? Well, in a normal earthquake, the built-up tension in Earth's crust release with a jolt in mere seconds. This sends a series of waves known as wave train that radiates from the point of the rupture. That's from Stephen Hicks, who's a seismologist at the University of Southampton. And the fastest traveling signals were primary waves, or P waves, which are compression waves that move in bunches like what happens to an extended slinky that gets suddenly pushed at one end. Next come the secondary waves, or S waves, which have more of a side-to-side -side motion. And both of these so-called body waves have relatively high frequencies. Um, it's a sort of ping rather than a rumble. Hmm. <coughs> Now finally, chugging along at the end come slow, long period surface waves, which are similar to the strange signals that roll out from um, Mayote, or Mayote, however you pronounce that. So for intense earthquakes, these surface waves can zip around the planet multiple times, ringing Earth like a bell. However, there was no big earthquake kicking off the recent slow waves. Adding to the weird weirdness, Mayotte's um, mystery waves are what scientists call monochromatic. Most earthquakes send out waves with a slew of different frequencies. But these sig this signal was a clean zigzag dominated by one type of wave that took a steady 17 seconds to repeat. Wow! So it's like you have colored glasses and are just seeing red or something, says Anthony Lomax, who's an independent seism seismology consultant. Now, Mayotte's um, volcanic roots are based on, or excuse me, based on scientific sleuthing done so far. The tremors seem to be related to the seismic swarm that's gripped Mayotte since last May. And hundreds of quakes have rattled the small nation during that time, most radiating from around 31 miles offshore, just east of the odd ringing. And the majority were minor trembles, but the largest clocked in a magnitude of 5.8 on May 15th, the mightiest in the island's re recorded history. Yet the frequency of these shakes has declined in recent months, and no traditional quakes rumble. No traditional quakes rumbled there when the mystery waves began on November the 11th. Hmm, curiouser and curiouser. Now the French Geological Survey or BRGM, is closely monitoring the recent shaking, and it suggests that a new center of volcanic activity may be developing off the coast. Uh, Mayotte was, was formed from volcanism, but its geologic be um, beasts have erupt haven't erupted in over 4,000 years. So instead, BRGM's analysis suggests that this new activity may point to magmic movement offshore miles from the coast under thousands of feet of water. Though this is good news for the island inhabitants, it's irksome for geologists, since it's an area that hasn't been studied in detail. 
See, why are we studying all of this other stuff when we haven't even checked out our own home first? We still have closets to open. Jeepers. There's boxes in the attic that we haven't got. Oh, wait, I'm talking about my shit. Never mind. Um, now, the location of the swarm is on the edge of the geological maps that we have, says uh, Nicholas Talifer, who's the head of the Seismic and Volcanic Risk Unit at BRGM. And there are a lot of things we don't know. And as for the November 11 mystery wave, he says, it's something quite new in the signals on our stations. So, hmm, interesting. This does go on quite a bit. So, but I just thought that is really pretty darn fascinating. Mother Nature is throwing something at them that they weren't prepared for. Why? Because she can. Ripples and waves. It's like a jello jiggler. Um... Scrubbles? What's a scrubble? Oh. Let's see. What is that? Jesse Ventura says, Trump will not have a chance if I run for POTUS. Really, Jesse? <laughs> okay. If it comforts you to think that way, darling, you just go right ahead. Wow. Jesse Ventura is an interesting critter, don't you know? I mean, he is amusing. And I really, really did like um, when he was governor of Minnesota and somebody had asked why he wasn't um, in favor of putting daycares on all of college campuses and universities. And he said, I wasn't in the room to make that baby. Why should I have to? help support it and I thought it was a valid answer myself you know that that is the results of your choice my dear not saying that I would be a heartless old heifer but don't be demanding that I help support you don't be demanding that kind of crap it's not the nice Okay, got that over on the effing side. Now I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have a couple more things yet that I would like to get to. Um, how many of you, let's see. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, let me see here. Do I want to go there? Let me check this one out. See how long it is. Because I'm close to the end, but I want to. This one is from Humans Are Free, and it's an oldie. March 17th, 1993. But hey, you know, sometimes things come around for a reason. So, conspiracy facts and spirituality are intimately connected. Is it considered not spiritual to talk about an elite or cabal running our world? Well, I don't call them elite. I call them the leeches. So, this has become a commonplace today, and there is a great deal of ridicule that comes when people feel looking at the truth of what is playing out in the world is crazy or a negative thing to do. In fact, the negative label on conspiracy theories that we place is one of the biggest spiritual bypasses that we can do. So let's dive in. The truth is, Understanding the way our world truly functions and consciousness evolution or spirituality do go hand in hand. Why? Because it's all part of life here. It is not separate. You don't have spirituality on one side and conspiracies or truth on the other. It's all interconnected in our life and human experience. And it's time to bring them together. So the challenge is... This isn't true 100% of the time, of course, but in a lot of cases, 
we see those in the truth-seeking realm feel consciousness or spirituality is airy-fairy and has no place in the big picture and is just a new age distraction. On the flip side, we see those engaged in spirituality seeking feel conspiracy slash truth seeking people are crazy and negative. While there is truth to some extent in both cases, there is a lot more to the discussion and a very important purpose for both. You've probably experienced it at some time, and it's believable that GMOs are unhealthy and corporations are using them to make money in a number of ways, but it's damaging to people and the environment. But yet there's no possible way that's happening with vaccines, right? Uh-huh. Or that 9-11 was an inside job, right? Uh-huh. How could this have been in 1993? I don't think so. Why did it say that? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to move along. Because, yeah, 9-11 wasn't in 93. I don't know why that one part said it did. In any case, so let me be the first to say that there are a number of conspiracy theories that have no backing, no facts, and are far-reaching and in many cases don't even help us along our journey. But this is not the case with many. In fact, the amount of evidence is often staggering. And it's simply that we don't want to believe it. I'm writing this because I'm calling for an end of the reduction of uh, conversation to that's crazy or that's fake news or that's a conspiracy. As it does nothing but maintain division, a lack of awareness, and a misinformed world that um, can't thrive. Time and time again, what is often called conspiracy turns out to be true, only a few months or a year later. So we can end this cycle by learning and choosing to listen instead of dismissing. Then checking in with our hearts and souls about what role this is playing in our experience so we can dissolve the need for the cabal. Now, this does go on quite a bit, but I see I am out of time. So, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. And uh, be sure to uh, check out the Freaker's Ball. It'll be on later on this evening. As a matter of fact, in just a couple hours... Um, I will be, no, I will not be back next week, Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. I will be with my mother, but I will be back next week, Friday. So until then, I hope y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend. I hope you stay warm, stay well, and uh, I guess I will catch up with you on the flip side. But please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.